He wears his fillings on his collar, just like I do. And it's ironic when people do that and they actually are brave enough to put their shit out in the atmosphere, knowing or unknowingly know that the result may not be to social media's fucking liking. Guess what happens? I say it's a big nut drop. I say people have balls and hearts like myself when I go out and say, oh, Patrick Mahomes isn't what we think he is. And then I take heat from it. But guess what? I stand on the hill. Big Matt stands on Colorado's hill. We're not a Colorado show, but Big Matt is blessing us every week to come on with Colorado Insight. And we're also going to talk NFL. Matt played seven years, obviously, for all you new listeners out there. Matt McChesney on TikTok. Everyone that's live on TikTok right now, make sure you follow Six Zero Equipment and Six Zero Academy. Uh, I'm dropping it for Big Matt today because I know all the dick riding fucking fanboys out there, casuals, I like to call them, are, try- are going to kind of come in and talk about what happened, Big Matt. Um, we don't give a shit. All we do is talk fast on this show. And it's the realest show on Earth, planet Earth. I've said enough, Earth. Big Matt. Um, I got before I get your take and all the haters we'll address, we'll just keep it between us. I want to ask you the thumbnail reads has Prime lost the locker room? And that's obviously a little clickbaity and also a possible scenario when a lot of people out there see see things like this, big big Matt. Um, we see a little argument. To me, it's coaching. Uh, I don't take too much out of it right here. Right there is what I didn't like. I didn't like the last trying to get your word in last and then prime turning around. Big Matt, to give you some uh what I'm what I've been talking about today. I said this is the time that Prime makes a sacrificial lamb out of everyone and anyone. I've I've rebuilt programs uh a lot of times. I've taken a, a 0 and 10 Compton College program when eight and two year one. I've taken independence, obviously, winning three games in six years to a national title run and first bowl win in his school history. I think I know what I'm talking about when it comes to rebuilding. And I was willing to sacrifice any and everyone that included coaches that weren't bought in. I fired administrators and teachers who I thought were screwing over players, getting them out of their classes. Um, players that didn't buy in cutting their asses in a heartbeat. I was am willing. And I was going to test you, big Matt. I was going to test you every day. What is your take on that whole verbal back and forth? To me, it's not a huge deal, but I want to also know, is that kid bought in? Is he above board or is he on board? That was the number one thing I always wanted to find out. Are you on board, Big Matt, or are you above board? Because if you're above board, you got to go. I got too many Chiefs already. Well, good morning, gentlemen. Um, Look, rough weekend. No one's going to say that it's not losing a 29-point uh, lead at halftime, blowing the biggest lead in school history. Can you tell us how you found out? Because I think that's huge first. Because I, I found out yeah, just I, like you did. I was like asleep. I was upstairs, 29 to nothing. I went to bed like every other sane person on the face of the earth. Earth, sorry, earth. And then uh, I woke up with one eye on the TV, uh, and it said 46-43 double overtime. And I was like, what the motherfuck? So look, uh, okay. Let me try and unpack all this. Number one, it's a terrible loss. It might be the worst loss in school history, all things considered. Like, I know 70 to 3 was bad when Vince Young taxed them in 05. That was the year after I left. Uh, but that was in the Big 12 title game to the eventual national champion. So, I, yeah, it's a terrible loss, but shit. You know, like there's been a couple in, in 18, they lost to Oregon State at home. They were up 31, or excuse me, 34 to 7 with like three minutes left in the in the third, and they lost 41-34. I remember leaving that game in the third quarter with my son and like getting home and turning on the TV, and they lost. And I was like, well, that's, that's fitting. Um, look, this, this is a terrible loss. It doesn't get any worse than this. Not only did you blow it, but you blew it to a team that you literally beat by 30 points in the first half. So that is unacceptable. And it can't be accepted. And I don't care how many fucking watches and sunglasses and all the other bullshit, all the hype, all the people that love us, all the bandwagon folks, all that's bullshit when it comes down to it. This is a teachable moment that he can really find out about his football team if they're really above board or if they're below. Now, the the whole has Dion lost the locker room 
like everybody needs to understand what I'm about to say. I'm not worried about Dion losing the locker room. If you're a player, you should worry about Dion losing you, homie. Mm. Like if you're a player on that roster and you don't want to buy in, okay. There's a line of players outside of the champion center door, not figuratively. Okay. But literally like when you talk about recruiting, they're lined up in the digital world on paper, waiting to get into the University of Colorado to play for this man. So it shouldn't be like, how can we help you, son? It's you don't want to play cover three correctly. You don't want to drop correctly. You don't want to open your hips right. You don't want to rush the passer. You don't want to give effort. Like this is another thing. I played defense at the University of Colorado in my first two years in the NFL. And I'm a huge effort guy. Like I, huge. It, it's the only thing that I can really gauge. Like, you can do your job. You can do it well. You can do it poorly, but you can still do it. But if you turn and chase the ball and you'll play hard and you'll stick your nose in there, even when you know you're going to get blown up, that's winning football. And the second half, they walked out and it it looked like a clown show, bro. They weren't chasing the ball. Everybody's acting like on the defensive side of the ball specifically. The offense was slow coming out in the third quarter, but you expect that with adjustments made by Stanford. They're good football players at a prestigious university. They're not just going to lay down. So I expected them to make some adjustments. I went back and watched the game. That's the beauty of being able to record everything. Um, but when, you, when you're looking at this, though, the defense just walked out like they were on their way to the foundry. Like the bar down on Pearl Street, like they're just already done. The game's a wrap and we're just going to pack it up. And I thought it was embarrassing as fuck as an ex-buff. Like I can only imagine how, how Coach Prime feels today, you know, and yesterday and the day before having to dwell on this all week. He can't play for him. I can't play for him. You can't play for him. Like Travis Hunter, bro, I, I don't even have an inkling of – the athletic ability Travis Hunter has. He's going to have $120 million in the bank before he turns 25. I'm nobody. I'm just some scrub old head, okay? But Travis Hunter on offense looked like the next coming of Terrell Owens. But on defense, he looked like Jason Seahorn, bro. Mm. Big like, that, that, dog. That, is that an issue of overuses, though, that you're seeing? In it's got to be, right? It, it's either I mean, over. Look, he looks like he's in great shape to me. But at the he same time. He came off a four-week hiatus, though. He did come off a four-week hiatus. He played every snap, which I can't bag on. I mean, I, I love how tough he we, is. We love it, Matt. You and I love it. We love the effort. Love it, but shit, dude. He was getting, yeah. like, a num the number one corner in college football doesn't get toasted for 15 and 297 and three tutties. That's yeah. not. That's not what happens. And I, I look, th there's also this thing in Boulder where if you criticize the team in Boulder, somehow you're not a good fan. Well, you're just being me, honest, though, man. You're just being let, honest. Let me, get this, let me get this straight. I'm not a fucking fan. That's I'm, not, I'm not a fan, everyone. Yes. I'm exactly. not your fucking buddy in the, in the stands bitching about the, you know, the, the football team not being able to block or the football team not being able to tackle. I'm not sitting up there drinking cores with you and trying bitching about how I can do this. No, you can't, motherfucker. No, you can't. You can't. Sit there, buy your ticket, shut the fuck up. We're not fucking buddies. I'm not one of your fanboy friends. So when I talk about this, whether it's the NFL or college football, it is totally different than the way you're looking at it. And I'm not trying to be an asshole. I am one when it comes to this kind of shit. I'm tired of hearing it. Like, when, when we're sitting, you, no, hold, hold on, let me finish my goddamn point here, please. When we're sitting here talking about the difference between the ability to actually look at what's happening on the field and fix it, I actually can. I've got at, at nine o'clock this morning on fall break, I drive to Six Zero Academy where it's full. Yesterday morning, we had 50 kids in there chomping at the bit to want to go play college football. So that means I can actually affect the room. When I have guys in the room that I work with on a daily basis, that's number one. Number two, I played there and I really give a shit and I'm there all the time, whether we're good one and 11 last year or the laughing stock of college football. And I'm the, the only alum up there trying to get the team ready and focused to go win a football game. You guys saw the fucking speech yeah. okay? or top of the mountain this year and ranked and everything's good or blowing a 30 point lead. 
if you can't be constructive, constructively criticized when you're on the top or the bottom, all right, that's a problem. Like it, it should, there, there is no lack of love here. In fact, if you love something and you watch it crumble in front of you or you watch something that's not acceptable and you don't say anything because you're afraid of like someone's reaction, that is actually enabling. That is actually the coward move. They have to look at themselves in the mirror and go, okay, we've got 10 days to get right. Okay. Like this is an embarrassing play for Travis. That sucks. I think he's a much better player than that. And this is a learning opportunity. He's, he can't even have a drink legally, bro. Like we, we got to understand this is a young football team that right now, I'm not making an excuse, but there are reasons right now. Everybody in that room needs to understand with the transfer portal there's no more free school seeking. We will replace you if you don't do your job. The coaches actually have a ton of power because they're under contract. The players are not. If the players don't fit Coach Prime's system moving forward into the second half of the schedule, that is ruthless, ruthlessly hard. Okay? They have got to find guys that want to be there. Coach Prime said specifically after the game, do you like football or is it just something you do? Do you love it or do you like it? Do yeah. you need it? Do you need this shit or do you just like, do you just like it when it's nice? All right. Because if you need football, I don't give a fuck when we're playing, where we're playing or if we're playing on concrete, I'm going to play balls out the whole time because I need this shit. If you just like it, well, maybe they, there were a bunch of guys that looked like they didn't like the second half the other night. It's too late. And oh my God, I'm sleepy. And I want to go to the bars and well, look at the chicken row five. She's hot. <laughs> Like, let's focus the fuck up and play football on Friday night. Like, it, it just, I, when Coach Prime said that after the game, it really resonated with me because I say that shit all the time. How many times have you guys heard me fucking say it? Uh, a ton. A ton. A ton. Yes. We're, we're already in Hobby Town, USA here in Colorado. Like, let's just be real. This is the softest, most entitled fucking state in the union. So, <laughs> let's look. There's a lot of shit that happened Friday night that I do not like. But one thing that I do know is that if you're losing because of this, you're a fucking born loser. But if we woke up Saturday morning eager to go learn from this, then we can get something out of it, man. Period. Let me let me ask you though two things. Number one, the head coach can create a culture, but you know this better than anyone. You were there for four or five years, and at the end of the day, the players are what resonates and creates the culture for the incoming puppies every single year. And it takes a Matt McChesney to tell the new freshman, Big Smitty, Hey dog, this is how we do shit at Colorado. Not that way. We do it this way. Are you, are you afraid of the possibility? This is me, the coach talking that we have so much turnover every year because of the hired mercenaries that you've stated that Steve Kim, we're bringing mercenaries in to basically turn over a bad program overnight. Seemingly. Are you afraid that there is no culture ever going to be developed there because of the turnover and we don't have the Matt McChesney's telling Big Smitty every year, hey, dog, this is how we do shit here. And are you seeing that right now? And that's the reason the thumbnail kind of says is, is prime losing the locker room. Are you seeing that being a possibility, at least for question number one? Let me ask you that. All right. So I'm glad you brought this up. And I, I don't know how to say this like correctly, so I'm just going to say it when you don't sing the fight song and you don't like have that part that has been there forever, it's hard to have, it's hard to teach community to a room full of kids that don't know anything about the place that came there because of coach prime. Mm -hmm. Like all eyes on me is a great song and I love it, but it's not the fight song at the university of Colorado. Mm -hmm. And I have begged them multiple times to come up there and teach them how to do it correctly. Instead of just this like mundane five, see like, nah, that's not the way we get down. That may be, again, that may be the way the fans get down and sing the fight song. But that's not the way we get down and sing the fight song. Right. So I think if you, want, if you want them to take them and they and we and all the players in that room that are starving for this because that's what football is, is community. It's the best melting pot in the fucking world. You want all these kids are starving for that community. They're starving for that fucking engagement. They're starving for that. So... It, that is the, the fight song isn't just a song at every university. It's after a dub coming together, everybody doing the same thing. You know, it's our champ, bro. 
If we were going to fucking war as dressed as Vikings a thousand years ago and chain mail and an ax, I'd be walking up to the goddamn gate singing that before I swung it. So, ah, da, 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 fighting, fight for both states. You know what I'm saying? You got me fired up right now. But that's the thing. The ball, your ball state song. Every time you guys got a dub, you're walking in like, sing that motherfucker. And I've been in the locker room four times now, and they sung it once. And it was really like, it was really like, eh. And I, look, again, I, this is all constructive. If you're getting mad at me because I'm criticizing this, understand what I believe. And it is black and gold. And if you get mad, then you get mad. I think that it's something that is really important. And they got a 10-day stretch here. And I'm going to say it again. Everybody up in Boulder, I've reached out so many times to do this. Let me come up there and educate the whole group on how we get down. I mean, it is, it is important. You want to talk about community and teaching the culture and the environment. Every Look, I'm not trying to teach the last 20 years to these kids. But God damn it, from 2004 on to like 1986, there's some bad motherfuckers that walked through those doors. And there's some people that laid a lot of concrete and a lot of foundation for the building they play in. And like it, it and it's real sexy and shit up there, but we're not very tough. And that shit's not cool in Boulder, dog. I'd rather be tough than sexy. Sexiness stays. Toughness is fucking something that's embedded in you. So I, I think that that one little thing, I know to the fanboy out there, it may not mean a lot. But again, to you, it's just a song, right? So I, I just, I think that there's a lot up there that they have access to that they may not even know they do. Like, I don't even know if the coaching staff up there, because there's literally no one on it that was there last year. Coach Hagen is in the ops department now. He's not really on the staff. So, like, do they even know the power of that, that two and a half or that one minute song? The power of it, the beforehand, the way that we get into it that you can't do in the, in the stands. The fans don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. That's my point. Mm. Like the, the, the buildup to actually singing the song and what it is and how we all come together, that's really the fucking point of this. So it's the ability for everybody on the field. One of the, one of the most famous moments in Colorado football history is at Texas in 1989 or 1990. They're getting beat. If they lose, they're one, one, and one. If they lose, they're out of the national title contention after being undefeated the year before. The defense is on the field, and fucking Eric Bieniemy, of course, Eric Bieniemy walks off the goddamn bench and walks straight into the defensive huddle and starts rallying them and getting them going and fucking with Alfred Williams and Canavis McGee and Joel Steed and Chad Brown and all these other bad motherfuckers that are out there, all these NFL players, right? Well, do you, like, other than Travis Hunter, who plays both ways, and Shador, obviously, do you see anybody from CU's offense walking in to the defensive huddle when they're down 20 or up 29 nothing, Or when they're up 29 to 19 all of a sudden and Stanford's out there rallying? Did anybody walk into the huddle and go, let's fucking go? No, because they're separated, offense, defense, and special teams. Like, this, no offense, this isn't Prime's bus. This is the University of Colorado. Coach Prime is our coach. There are certain things up there that bring us together, and that's one of them. And I really think they need to look at it a little bit harder because it's a rallying point. I think they should really, really, really focus on it. This is why Big Mac keeps it real. Uh, Smitty and I, the greatest, realest show on planet Earth.